Jaguars fans, what is going on? Welcome back into the Fan Cave. Man, we got a short week this week. We got the uh, Cincinnati Bengals up in Cincinnati on Thursday Night Football. We're going to have the gang all there. We're going to be on prime time. The spotlights will be on. Urban Meyer, Trevor Lawrence, because this is a battle. This is a battle of two number one draft picks back-to-back years. 2020 with Joe Burrow, 2021 with Trevor Lawrence. That is going to be the buildup of this game. You know, there's a lot of hype surrounding this game because it's, you know, Joe Burrow's first year back after his injury. And Trevor Lawrence is struggling right now. He's not he's not playing poorly, but he's had a lot of interceptions and very few touchdowns. You know, my big question for Trevor going into this game is how are his interceptions this game? The Bengals have a, a reasonably good secondary, I would say. And how does – is this the possibility that we see Trevor's first interception for a game? If you told me right now Trevor has no interceptions but he also doesn't score, i take that in a heartbeat. You'd think back to last week – that game, the tide of that game changed both with both interceptions, with the Hollister drop and then the terrible pick six. The, the energy of that game massively shifted both times. One ended a scoring drive, one led to the Cardinals scoring. So if Trevor can have an interception-free game, I, that puts the Jaguars in a great spot. You know, this, this is a Bengal secondary that's allowed 68% completion percentage. So... That helps out Trevor uh, with them only uh, with them allowing a seventy almost a seventy percent uh, percent completion to opposing quarterbacks. On the on the opposite side of that, they've only given up four passing touchdowns. So if Trevor can keep the ball away from the Bengals defenders, I'm okay with no with no with no uh, with no touchdowns because this is a defense that is that is a bend but don't break defense in the Bengals. And so, with that being said, I definitely I am I'm one thousand percent okay with no touchdowns. Now, also, give James Robinson the ball. You know, we've seen his touches go up every week, from week one in Houston, where I believe he got it five times, up to now, where I believe he got it fifteen times in week three. I want to see James Robinson get eighteen plus catch or touches this game on the ground. That's great if he gets a couple more touches out of the backfield as a receiving threat. Cool. I want him to run the ball 18 times. He's averaging five yards a carry. Feed him. He's on pace for 900 plus yards as it is, and you've been using him like he's nothing. You've been using him like we have uh, TJ Yeldon back there, Toby Gerhardt. Give him the ball. He's a thousand yard running back, and he deserves to be a Pro Bowl running back this year with the way he's playing thus far. So feed him the ball. 31 attempts through three games is pathetic for a team that's needing a spark and needs some uh, something solid they can game plan off of. James Robinson is what you can game plan off of to help Trevor Lawrence in the offense. Now, DJ Chark has been someone that seems to be quiet all season, but he's, he's averaged 50 yards a game. I give him that. He's averaged 50 yards a game. Marvin Jones as well. They both have two touchdowns on the year, so... I'm not upset with that at all. I I want to continue to see them develop uh, with Trevor. You know, DJ is cleaning up the drops, but he's just not getting open. I believe he was targeted eight times last week, only had three catches. Marvin Jones is just a reception machine. You know, he's carrying my fantasy team in one of my leagues as my wide receiver because I picked him up late, and he's the volume he's getting is incredible. So for a fantasy side, Marvin Jones is awesome in a PPR league. On realis- realistic side, real football, Marvin Jones is a good wide receiver number one for Trevor Lawrence. He's not he's not going to take the top off a of defense, but if you need a sure a set of surefire hands, Marvin Jones will catch it. You know, I think he's averaging like eight catches a game, so easy. I'm cool with that. You know, and on top of that, this the the like I said, the Bengals secondary is good. The only downside is they're they're injured right now. They're they have two corners. I would say two of their top three corners in uh, Chidobia Woozy as well as Trey Waynes. They're both injured. They're both um, to be determined. They're both limited in practice, I believe. Uh, I believe Waynes actually didn't practice on Tuesday. I want to say I want to say he was he was lynched, listed on the injury report as um, did not practice or uh, limited. So with those two being out, I definitely think that opens up this, the, the possibility, or potentially being out, I should say. It opens up the ability to actually have Trevor stretch the field with Visca, with Chark, Maybe we see a Tyron Johnson appearance. You know, everyone's been wanting to see that big play from him. Who knows? Maybe they get Jamal Agnew into some space and let him work because he's made magic happen in the space they've given him so far with the with the kick six and then also the kick return. So more than happy with that. 
And the Jaguars have a uh, have a new addition to their tight end room. As it made big news, C.J. Henderson is going to the Carolina Panthers along with a fifth-round pick for tight end Dan Arnold in a third-round pick. I don't believe Dan's going to play this week just because it is the short week, and they're going to they're going to look to get him back in week five. But man. If he, if he could play, if he does play, he immediately is the best pass-catching tight end on this team, even if James O'Shaughnessy is healthy. He is that, you know, James O'Shaughnessy, you look up you look up what he's done. He has good numbers, but he doesn't have big plays. Dan Arnold is the exact opposite. He doesn't have the best numbers, but he makes good plays happen. He's that good, you know, sturdy set of hands in the middle of the field. That is what Dan Arnold does. That is what he's good at. He's not gonna. He's not gonna blow up your fantasy team with you know eight, ten catches like a Travis Kelsey will, but he is a good tight end for this team. He is you know you think about helping Trevor Lawrence run James Robinson, get a good tight end. They did that. CJ or CJ Henderson is someone that I. They, what was the report that they had to go get him from his house? You know think back to RJ Sauer days. They had to go get him from his house. He was a he was a bad first round pick, and he was incredibly talented. I'm not going to take that away from him. He was incredibly talented. But he wasn't – his heart just never seemed to be like it was in it. I mean, I'm putting a lot of weight into body language of his. But, man, whenever you don't show any emotion when you get drafted and the team has to apparently go pick you up for year two training camp, red flag, red flag, red – all over the place, not good. So they move on from him. And we're going to go to the offensive line here because they have a tough matchup here. They, the Bengals have had 10 sacks on the year, or excuse me, 13 in three games. You know, we, 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 we just went from playing Chandler Jones and J.J. Watt to stifling them to, I believe, three sacks to now having the Bengals front seven, which has been incredibly good. They have a lot of – they don't have that star player, but they have a lot of great role players. I believe Erickson is, uh, was their free agent acquisition uh, coming over from the Saints, he he makes a huge difference. He's had a great year thus far, and I'm expecting him to create some havoc for Trevor Lawrence in this front five. I am. He's gonna. He's a good player. I can't. I can't knock the talent. So, thankfully, the Bengals are just as bad at the front five. You know they are. The Bengals have allowed ten sacks in three games. Unfortunately, we ended the Josh Allen streak last week with him not getting a sack. I'm expecting that that streak to pick right back up. I'm expecting three sacks. In four games for Josh Allen, he's 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 showing that he is who we who we thought he was. Twenty nineteen was a fluke. It was his little sophomore slump. Okay, we're moving into or again twenty twenty was a sophomore slump. Moving into twenty one twenty one, he seems to be good. You know, he seems to be who we thought we were getting. Unfortunately, not C.J. Henderson, but I digress on that. So, can the front seven get the pressure? Because four sacks in three games isn't terrible. We're getting pressure. We're getting a whole lot more pressure than we got last year. But I want to see more pressure. You know, we're playing a bad offensive line. So I'd like to see a couple sacks in this game. You know, maybe maybe Taven Watch picks back up. Maybe Taven Watch is becoming, going to become a thing. I believe he didn't get the uh, official credit for the sack last week. But I Taven got the sack. You watch it, Taven got the sack. He's gonna, he, sh- he deserves the credit for it if he's not going to get it. So... Taven Watch, white hot. You know, this is uh, a Bengals team that's only averaging 3.9 yards per attempt. Unfortunately, they are averaging over 100 yards per game. So they're just kind of doing a whole lot of volume with the run game. As opposed to the Jaguars, who have rushing yards per attempt through the roof and then no average rushing yards to show for it at the end of a game. Can Taven continue to be a menace on the front seven? I can't believe I'm using those words in the, in the same sentence. But hey, he's shown good things so far. I wish we'd have seen these things sooner than the year before. Is uh, I believe this is his contract year, so I'd love to see that. I would love to see it before, but hey, Taven Watch is white hot right now. I'm excited to see what he can do in Week Four. <sighs> Man, no C.J. Henderson's gonna hurt though. Uh, I can't lie. No C. No C.J. Henderson because he's a, he's a talented corner. <laughs> it's I hate to see you go, and I hate to see I. I but I, I'm. I'm happy with the compensation we're getting, but man, it's going to be tough without having him on the team. You know, he didn't play last week, so whatever. And they played well. You know, they limited to the arguably the best wide receiver in the league to three catches and 20-some yards. So if they can hold Jamar Chase, Tyler Boyd, T. Higgins to that, awesome. Because it's going to be – it's going to look bad, in my opinion, the secondary is this week. They have a lot of talent. 
and they have a lot. They have four massive receiving threats that they can use: Chase, Higgins, Boyd, and Mixon. Mixon's a, Mixon was the reason this team lost to the Bengals last year. For whatever reason, it seems like whenever Joe Mixon gets the ball in his hands, he makes plays happen. As sad as that is to say for me, and he just seems to be like Derrick Henry, Marcus Mariota, where they are the kryptonite for this Jaguars team. I'm absolutely putting Joe Mixon, and uh, any any fantasy thing you have, I'm starting Joe Mixon because he just has this weird knack about him where he can make magic things happen against the Jaguars. So, but the Dewey revenge tour can it continue you know going into week three he said i've seen what you've been saying about me i'm not letting it get to me i'm gonna come out and ball and what does he do he gets the first turnover of the jacksonville jaguar season so it's it's an incredible thing to see that dewey wingard is becoming a reasonable safety because i think he played well in week three if he can continue that to week four and actually help out um jenkins in the in the back half more power to him you know i i would love to absolutely be wrong on every take i have about andrew wingard i'd love him to be an all pro who wouldn't right you know i'd love to be on here and look stupid thinking that andrew wingard deserved to be cut and then he becomes this magical player i don't think he ever will be but it, can he be serviceable absolutely so dewey wingard I'm, I'm thinking has a good chance in this game he's got four talented wide receivers or receiving threats to go up against this week can he can he repeat what happened in week three I hope so. I really, really hope so. We don't know. But I'm hoping this revenge tour of his continues. Absolutely. And is this going to be the Bon Voyage Josh Lambeau game? Is it? You know, that's the that's one of my massive questions right now. Is this the end of the Josh Lambeau experiment? I wouldn't even call it an experiment. The ride. You know, it started, I believe, in 2017. We rode him through the magical season. Wow, that was a little weird. We, we you know, we, we, we were with him all the way through 2017. 2018, 2019, 2020, he was really the only bright spot on the team outside of the Kelly's Campbell and the occasional good Jalen Ramsey play, things like that. And then into this 2021 year, it just seems like the brakes have blown off of him. You know, the, the, this, wheel, this vehicle that he was riding on has no more wheels. The engine's throwing stuff through the hood. It's, it's a burning mess. Of all of the kicks he's uh, attempted in the regular season this year, he's only 50%. He's missed three field goals. He hasn't made a field goal yet, and he's five of seven on PATs. The man's made 50% of the kicks he's attempted this year. I wish I could go to my job and make and do 50% and do what I do, you know, just write off my reputation because he's got a terrible case of the yips. There's a kicker a dime a dozen. You know, as long as we don't go out and sign, like, double doink Cody Parkey and have replace him with him, I'm okay. I... I believe we did bring someone in for practice squad. If he if he goons it up again, bye. It's week four, and you and if he if he's not one hundred percent on Thursday, bye. I don't care. I'm not, I don't want to do this. Well, he made a field goal this week. That makes him twenty five percent on field goals. You're gonna hit me with the. It was raining and yeah. Those are kicks he's made the past three years, three four years. He makes those. He's got the yips right now, and I'm sorry, it's. This isn't a league where you can have the yips, especially at a position as pivotal as kicker because that game is a lot close. Both of the games where he's missed significant kicks are different games if he makes his kicks. These weird, wonky-looking scores, 19 points, you know. How many teams score 19 points in a game? The Jaguars do because they miss extra points. One of three on Sunday and extra points, not good. But... All pro Logan Thomas. Holy hell. He's got like a he's got a leg. You want to talk about Greg the Legs Erline? Man, Logan Thomas. Whoo! 50 yard boomers every time he gets into the anytime he has to punt, he's booming it. I'm A okay with Logan Thomas. You know, keep doing what you're doing, buddy. And then also, Jamal Agnew. Worth every penny. You know, there was a moment in time when we were thinking, why did we pay this guy so much money to be a return specialist? And one, we barely seen him return anything. And then the second we do, he surprises all of us and takes one to the house. And then next week, takes another one to the house. It was, he's worth every penny. I'm more, this special teams unit, you take Josh Lambeau, give me a Joe Blow kicker who's, you know, 85% on his kicks. We've got one of the best special teams units in the league. We've got a potential all-pro kicker. We have a, someone who's on pace for a record year in Jamal Agnew and returned kicks. We've got someone 
well, you know, these two together, if you literally just take the kicker out, we've got one of the best special teams units in the league. Put Lambeau in, we're back in 20th because homie can't kick. So, I'm going to say this right now. If the, Jaguar, the Jaguars can win this game. They can. They're, they're going up against a 2-1 and one Bengals team. But if they can harass Joe, uh, Joe Burrow, if they can control the passing game the way they controlled the Cardinals passing game, this game is manageable. You know, and I would absolutely take the Cardinals receiving core over the Bengals. I would. Anytime you can wave DeAndre Hopkins in my face and then also add in Rondell Moore, who's looked incredible, and then Christian Kirk, who's also looked incredible, absolutely I'm taking that. But I'm not saying that to say that the Bengals have slouches at corner at wide receiver. If they can limit them the way they limited the Cardinals, magical things will happen this week. I feel like we got close with week three. I think week four might be the week we actually get a win. You know, uh, it'll be a close one if they do. If they if they do win, I think it'll be a very close game. I mean, it's gonna be. I, I I'm gonna say it's probably gonna come down to a uh, like a three, four, five point game, which just I I'm low key thinking this is gonna turn into a shootout with just offenses just firing back and forth with the Bengals potentially having two uh, corners out and just the Jaguars meh secondary. So definitely gonna in my opinion turn into a shootout. I'm gonna go thirty one. 28, 20, you know, 27 Jaguars if they can control the wide receiver course for the Bengals. If they don't, it's going to it's going to be not good. It won't be good. It's going to be some weird score from the Jaguars like like 13 or 12 cuz Lambo is going to miss another two PATs, something like that. It's going to be a weird wonky score and I'm going to go if they can't control 35-14. Uh, Bengals, that's that's how much weight I'm putting into their receiving core. It's, it's a very good receiving core. If they can control them, Jaguars win. And if, if, if Trevor doesn't throw interceptions, I think the Jaguars win. If they don't control the wide receiver core of the Bengals, Jaguars lose. If Trevor throws a bunch of interceptions and throws one touchdown again, Jaguars lose. So I'm going to end it with that. Keys to victory, run James Robinson, limit the wide receiver core of the Bengals, Run the damn ball. That simple. So, final thing, 31-24 Jaguars. I'm going with it. I'm locking it in. 31-24 Jaguars. I know I'm probably going to get roasted for that. Okay. I'm I'm a delirious Jaguars fan. So, thank you guys so much for watching, though. If you, I really do appreciate it. If you, also, if you did enjoy the video, please like, share, and subscribe to the videos. It helps the fan cave grow immensely. Brings new people in. And if, hey, if you're if you're a Bengal fan, drop some hate down in the comments. I love chatting it up with you guys. Even even if you're not a Jaguars fan, if you are a Jaguars fan, help me help me fight back against these Bengal fans that are going to come for me. All right. With that being said, stay safe and go Jaguars.